Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever or whenever you may be. Uh, welcome to the overnight. I am DM Foss, and joining me tonight is Penfold, a trusty sidekick. How are you doing? I tonight? killed the last guy. Got tired <laughs> of hearing him. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight, um, I thought we'd talk about uh, restoration of rights. I know I put restitution of rights, and that kind of had to do with the uh, thumbnail that I first made, which was garbage. But, uh, so I, but uh, restoration of rights. Um, so you've been to jail, um, you're a felon, and you get out. Um, should you get your rights back? Um, should you be able to vote? Should be able to own a gun again? Um, I say yes. I think once you've served your debt to society, I mean completely, um, Parole is done, whatever other stipulations, um, you should automatically get your rights back. Um, you have served your debt to society. And if you reoffend, then you lose your rights again until your debt is paid once again. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. So, Penfold, what do you think? Um,. Well, that's uh, it's close to where I am. Um, I prefer them to, um, instead of automatically get their rights back, uh, I'd like it to where they, uh, they had to petition. And then you do it on a case-by-case -case basis. That's what we have at the moment. Um. I can understand. I can understand that. Um, I. The only reason I would agree with uh, going through a petition pro uh, process is just to make sure that the bureaucracy um, doesn't overlook that you should get your rights back. Um, but right now, it's depending on your state, can be yeah, kind of an arduous. Yeah, um, and costly to get your rights back. Um, I've known two people who have done it. And one of them, he actually ended up being friends with a judge who kind of helped him take care of that. And the other one had um, a friend who was a lawyer, and um, they helped him. So it, you know, cut their cost. But if you're not... If you're not connected, then it um, can get expensive. You know, hiring a oh, lawyer, yeah. um, court fees, and I don't know. I don't remember um, what all fees you have to pay and whatnot. Yeah, I don't like the. I don't like that part of it. Um, I'd rather have it be like a uh, almost like a shall issue. Like you apply. We pay like a fee for paperwork. I don't know, like 25 bucks, whatever seems quote unquote reasonable for someone filing your stuff into the system. And then they review it and uh, approve it or deny. I, but you that, know, I would, they're not going to do that. I would be okay with that. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, um, this isn't a passion passion project for me, so I, you know, it's kind of the way I think it should be. But I'm not out, you know, protesting or. Um, I did contact um, some of my state representatives, um, and one of them got back to me, let me know that uh, starting next year, there was, a, was there was a bill just signed that next year felons will once they're they've served all their time, will get their voting rights back. Um, and that's, 
Um, and then as I looked into it, it seems like the I had viewed the rights as you know one block of you know things where you know it's all your rights, gun rights, voting rights, and whatnot. But um, I put a link for the uh, restoration of rights project um, down in the description, and they show state by state um, kind of. Um, there's well, there's a lot on that website, and but the part I link to shows um, like your loss of uh, loss and restoration of your firearms rights, um, and then there's your civil rights, and then there's a few other categories. But then it they list state by state, and then the state codes that cover that. Um, tells you what the codes are and I didn't link to the codes because there's a lot of stuff um, but so I'm trusting that the this site is correct uh, according to yeah. them it's been updated um, was it 2020 it was updated last year so it's fairly current um, but uh, so that's you know, if you're curious, curious about your state, you can go look at um, giving you an idea of um, how you lose your rights and then how you might get them back. And then any the other links are uh, for the Bureau of Justice and Statistics, United States Sentencing Commission, um, Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. Um, and that'll, that'll be um, any recidivism stats that we cover, they all pretty much align with each other. So um, when we talk about it, it might be from one or the other, but that's where um, I got my information from. Yeah, and to, to play devil's advocate for uh, people, not even quote unquote anti-gunners, but even people on the, the right side of the political compass, would say um, that it's uh, too dangerous to give them back the right to guns because the recidivism rate is so high for felons. Well, yeah, the basically two thirds um, are rearrested within the first nine years, and then, but that's just arrests. So that's fifty percent of those are reincarcerated again. Um, it's so it'd be a third. Fifty percent of two thirds is a third, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but um, so within the first nine years, eighty-three percent um, are arrested. Um, Seventy-seven percent are non. Or uh, I wrote down non-drugs, but I think they're drug-related, non-violent, and then thirty-four percent are are violent. And within those, um, oh, I know that what what that was. Seventy percent of them um, will be for like property crimes, drug crimes, and then thirty-four percent are for violent crimes, and if your arrest, if your imprisonment was for a violent crime, you're more likely to commit a violent crime um, if you reoffend. So a third of a third commit a violent crime. So that'd be ten uh, percent. Uh, <laughs> They'll yeah. check our math. Don't worry. It'll yeah, be in I'm the not comments. doing. I'm not doing TV math. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But uh, the uh, the devil's advocate argument against the devil's advocate argument I just made was uh, the people that you don't want to get guns that end up doing violent crimes will just buy the guns illegally anyway. And so we're taking away the gun rights of 90% of those felons that don't commit any violent crimes because of the violent 10%. 
Um, DJ posted the number for the U.S. Capitol switchboard, and you can find out who your representatives are and whatnot and get a hold of them through that. Um, yeah, and I, I think this is a huge... You know, it encompasses a lot more than what we're going to talk about. But I want to try and pare it down a little bit just so, um, just because there's so much. Because I think it's... Yeah, we the, could talk for hours. The bigger issue, I think you you get into prison reform. And um, I think the um, um, failed social programs that... Um, set you know set people up to fail um but i didn't don't want to get too much into that just because we're going to end up everywhere um and kind of lose the point of what we're talking about but so you know if somebody gets out of prison and they don't get they can't get their rights back um, or it's hard to get your rights back then i think that that um, uh, how to how to put it it uh, keeps them. That's not exactly what I'm. It's a uh, it's a roadblock to getting back into society, where you, yeah you're pegged as a felon, so you're the felon. You're always a felon, you know. Um, John Val John family. Yeah. Like if you're married to the person that has the felony, it affects your gun rights because you got to make sure they have no access. Otherwise, you're committing a felony by. Like, I don't think you can leave your gun on the nightstand if you're married to a felon who's sleeping right next to you. I yeah, could be and wrong. Been, it might depend on your state, but. There was a case last year, and I, I can't remember where it was, but. Um. There was a lady who her she had guns and her husband was not allowed to have guns, but she kept them in a safe that he supposedly didn't have access to. But they confiscated her guns because it was in the same house. And I don't know what if that case has gone anywhere or what became of it. I haven't haven't heard, but you know that's an issue that you run into. But you know. As I'm saying, like, you know, you're labeled as a felon and that's all you ever are from then on, you know, getting a job, you know, you don't get to vote, you don't get gun rights, you don't get this, you don't get that. And so how do you um, get back into society? You know, it's, I think it sets you up to go back to prison. Yeah, it's uh Are there any states that automatically give that right back? I don't think there are. Um, I know it's been I, proposed. I don't think so. Looking through the the list that I printed out from the Restoration of Rights Project, I didn't see any that were automatic. Because um, that would have been huge news. I would have picked up on that. I well, read. I hope a, I would have. I read a news article, and I forget what it was. I came across it today. They were talking like it was automatic and how crazy it was that felons would get their rights back. But I haven't, I haven't seen where that's exactly the, how that happens. Normally it's either after you served all your time, if you get a pardon or, um, uh, kind of the, or, um, an expungement something like that then you, you can get your rights back but as far as i know that's for like gun rights there's nothing automatic for voting rights there's 20 states i think now that um, you automatically get your rights back when you're when you've served your term or have been pardoned or whatnot well that's a start and if you didn't know serving on a jury is considered a right so if you're a felon, you lose the right to serve on a jury. Hmm. Might have to 
use that info later in life. Life. <laughs> But for but, uh, um, uh, the, I even had the, it affect me once. The whole uh, living in a house with a felon. Theoretically, I had this affect me. In my younger years, I was going to school and I uh, was living in the basement of a woman's house. I was renting the room, and uh, turns out she was a felon. I was renting the room from, and. Uh, she informed me that I needed to install a safe or I was committing <laughs> a felony. Theoretically. I was like, oh, shit. That's not something you, you don't do a background check on your landlord. No. That's, um, probably nothing anybody really thinks about. Yeah, right. But, uh, I mean, they got, a, they got a key to your house. They got a key to your room. Technically, they have access. So. Depends on if how um, the cops want to play it, I imagine, in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, I can see, you know, if you're in a big city, being it being treated differently than if you're, you know, dealing with the county. Yeah. So, uh, hypothetically, we give the felons their right to vote back in these uh, 20-something states. If they want their right to get their guns back, they should be voting for candidates that want to give them guns back. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't, you know, I haven't looked at any stats on if um, felons are lean one way or the other politically, I think um, probably a good chunk of felons don't vote. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't have any numbers to back up that opinion. But uh, I do know that it, one side is hoping that they vote a certain way. I'll say possibly, but, you know... <laughs> It's, I have a hunch they hope. <laughs> it, I don't know. I, I it's a characterization that I can't uh, say one way or the other. So I'm gonna leave. Well, it I'm not there. gonna tell them how to vote, but uh, if they want to help themselves, they gotta vote for people that want to help them. So Ozark is saying it seems the broader issue is whether or not the idea of lifelong conditional release is constitutional. Um, That's essentially what is it is when you don't get your rights back. So basically life on parole. I I think so. Um, You know, and I do think that if you've broken society's trust, that it's up to you to regain that trust. But um, I don't think extra burden should be put on you to do that, you know. And like I said, I'm not, you know, um, it's, you know, it's just an opinion that I have and it's, you know, I'm not an ardent advocate, but, and I could see, you know, when your time is all done and then you tack on a certain amount of time, five years or, you know, whatever, you stay clean for five years, then get your rights back. But I think it should, there should be a process that's easier to get your rights back. And we, we do do that with, um, other type of crimes. Um, like, for example, uh, um, you can petition to get your right for firearms back in Washington, but I don't think you can do it immediately. I don't know how long the wait is. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't remember because. Um, but like, there's a. I'm pretty sure there's a requirement. Like, you have to have not committed any crimes within a certain period to even apply. Um, that's possible. Let me see if what it says on my little cheat sheet here. If it says the right. Uh, well, it doesn't doesn't really say. I would probably have to go into the. Uh, I can see if I still Washington. have my landlord's number. Call her up. Well, that's what I thought. Oh. Um, G23, I don't know if you know G23. He went through the process of getting his rights back. He got in trouble as a as a Ute. And um, he's one of the people that I talked about where he got his rights back. Um, he happened to have a friend that was a lawyer. And she helped him go through the process and, you know, probably saved him thousands of dollars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is, uh, do you know what state he's in? Well, he was, he's from Washington. He oh. got in trouble in Washington. Well, if um, he listens to this, maybe he can comment down below. Let us well, know. He's pr probably sleeping. Well, I, I meant in the future. Oh. Yes, G23, if you watch this, um, leave a comment. Let people know, you know, a thumbnail sketch of what you went through, if you don't mind. Um, but on this sheet that I have, it says um, restoration for less serious offenses by court order after a waiting period. Um, to, uh, yeah, that's a good question because we're talking about felonies. And um, you can lose your rights for misdemeanors, yeah, like uh, um, domestic violence. For Washington, and, it's uh, convicted of violent drug or sex offense, including misdemeanors, um, but not those sentenced to probation. And then federally, if um, you're a felon, then you're you're screwed. <laughs> yep. I don't know if you can get your rights back if if you're. Um, convicted uh, on a federal level speaking of felons trying to find workarounds um there's this really interesting story from washington state they had a uh cops had a shootout with a guy in leavenworth washington with a he had a black powder uh, 1858 <laughs> revolver <laughs> and uh he was a felon and uh, they couldn't find any evidence that he fired it, but it had empty chambers because there's no casings. Yeah, and the he actually got away with it. Black powder isn't considered a firearm, but no. if you shoot at a cop with it, hey, there well, <laughs> you might get in trouble. Yes, uh, but uh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find the story. Leavenworth, Washington. Um, they even got video of it. It's pretty cool. Well, <laughs> no one died, so it's not it's not a grim uh, video to watch. But uh, yeah, this guy was um, sleeping in his truck. Cop comes up, knocks on the window with a flashlight, and he gets a uh, 1858 stuck in his face. I think that happened uh, five, six years ago. Yeah, I don't. I didn't hear about it until you told me about it. Gun website says uh, you often leave one cylinder empty. He had more than one cylinder empty when this was all over, though. Probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think he had a couple left, something like that. Um, the Wenatchee. World, I think that was the paper covered it. 
and we're going really deep into Washington. Yeah, I haven't been to Wenatchee since the probably mid '80s. Apple capital of the world. Yeah. I only know of a. Uh, there is a uh, YouTube watcher for Never Enough Ammo that is from Wenatchee, so maybe he's listening to this. Who knows? Oh, Leavenworth is a really neat town to go to. I mean, it's a little Bavarian town up oh, in the yeah. mountains. Uh, beautiful in the winter when it snows and everything's covered. Um, I mean, it's an absolute tourist trap, um, but it's it's a really cool place to visit. Oktoberfest. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's in later hosen, eating pretzels and sausages. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, be warned, if you go in the summer, it's going to be a billion degrees. Oh, yeah. No clouds. The good thing is it's uh, dry heat. Well, I guess. Well, uh, as opposed to uh, when it's like 95 at the coast, I'd rather have it be 110 in uh, Wenatchee. When it's like twenty uh, percent humidity and you don't even sweat, the water just is sucked out of your body. So, Woods is um, out there. He says, uh, "I thought in Leavenworth, Washington, you had to fight with uh, sword and full plate." I well, I sent, that, but, uh, I sent him a link if he wants to has anything to say about the restoration of rights. If he wants to join in. Yeah, I will put it this way. As far as um, my opinion on all this goes, um, let's say in Washington State it was put on the uh, the ballot for us to vote on an initiative. Um should felons get their rights back, I would vote yes. Um, I kind of I kind of look at the Second Amendment this way. Um, I'll fight for your right to own a nuclear weapon, and I'll settle for the right to own a machine gun. So, if that makes any sense at all. I might not believe that you should immediately get your gun rights back, but I will vote for you to get your gun rights back. If I'm asked to uh, my opinion on a ballot, I would vote yes on it. Just you know, as I've said, I think you should get your uh, your rights back, all your rights back. You know, you have a God-given right to serve on a jury. You should get that back. Um, and if you know, if anybody that's watching this in replay, uh, leave a comment if you agree, disagree. Uh, you know, maybe something we didn't think about. Um, let us know. Theoretically, that would be a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, the way I look at it, um, You'll see, um, like, you see insane stuff getting passed in um, uh, more left-leaning states. And um, you wonder how that happens. And it's because even though the people that are voting for it don't exactly believe... Uh, well, I'm thinking of a specific example, but I don't want to use it. But um, let's just say there's people that believe in other people's right to do something, even though they personally wouldn't do it themselves. And it keeps getting pushed further and further. Um, but I think we should do that with the Second Amendment when we can. If there's something up to vote, go all out, even if you don't believe about it uh, for yourself. Because uh, we need all the help we can get right now. 
Yeah. Uh, and what uh, kind of what, what you were talking about earlier is the big ask. You know, it's a negotiating strategy where you ask for ask for something huge because you want this small thing. Yeah. You know, and then negotiate back. It, yeah. You know, I don't not opposed to it. Um, but I think, you know, with the to kind of bring it back to the restoration of rights, it if we don't give somebody their rights back and this isn't you know whether it's you know you go through a certain time or pay or whatnot because there's people that think you shouldn't get your rights back ever then one why let them out or just make every sentence a death sentence because you're not um you're discarding them as a person and not everybody can be um rehabilitated um, but if you don't give someone the chance they will not be rehabilitated pretty much i think that's yeah, kind of the, uh, the overarching issue that if we're going off the hard numbers we went over earlier it's really only about 10 percent you got to worry about the uh violent reoffenders um yeah and you know when i you know, when i mentioned like prison reforms you know the i don't know i think there should be reform but i don't know exactly how to reform it you know i don't think you let everybody out but you know there's if you've broken the trust of society then yeah you get punished but you know, it shouldn't be a lifelong punish unless it's warranted by the crime that you committed. And uh, I won't use a specific person, but I've heard this argument a lot that um, everyone that gets let out of prison should immediately get their rights back as soon as they're off of parole, right? And that includes gun rights. And uh, the the reasoning is if you can't trust that person with uh, a motor vehicle or a knife or um, pool cleaners, chemicals, um, then they shouldn't be out of prison. That's kind of the way I lean. Um, and uh, I guess a counter argument would be the people that don't want them to get their gun rights back don't think they should have got out of prison in the first place. Because that's, that's another well, side of this argument. Are I we think, letting people out that shouldn't be? Like that did happen during COVID when they started letting um, people out of prison in Washington State, didn't it? Yeah. We let out a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And uh, I can't think of any specific cases, but some of them did not uh, end very nice. Well, I think you, I think there's two, kind of two factions that are against giving the rights back, especially gun rights. Um, one would be those who don't like guns, don't think anybody should have guns, so they don't want to give gun rights back. And then... Um, those who do like guns but want harsher punishments. Uh, I don't know if that made sense. It, I didn't say and, what uh, I was thinking, but I'm. <laughs> it all got muddled on the way out. <laughs> I think we, uh, I think we get the gist. But um, I was just thinking. Um, I was reading the chat and. Uh, this had a thought um, reading that uh, once you serve your sentence, you should get your rights back, right? There yeah. is precedent for certain crimes where we do let you back out, but you're permanently on a watch list, and that's for sex offenders. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't, you know, I don't have numbers or stats or anything, but I had That's heard a... a lot saying um, with sex offenders that it is a lifelong problem. Um, where they're likely to reoffend, and I don't, you know, I don't have any studies or anything to back up that. That's just what I've, I've heard from uh, uh, law enforcement and whatnot. But I'm yeah, kind no. of pulling that from years and years and years ago. Theoretically, there are situations where you can get off that list. But you have to, you have to a petition, and you have to b have done like nothing wrong, ever since you got out. Yeah, G G Webs is is right. Where um, a lot of people, when they hear felon, they will think armed robbery, bank robbery, you know, assaults, where it, they can be a white collar crime, you know, embezzlement or. Um, for our state, you have marijuana seeds in your pocket when you get on an airplane. Um, if you shoplift, I think it's, I can't remember it's if it's five or eight hundred dollars. I think it's a uh, thousand. It used, used to be three fifty and then they upped it. Um, that's felony shoplifting. But, uh, yeah. Or if you get in a, uh, you get in a fight and you break someone's bone. That's a felony. Well, of course, that would be a violent crime. <laughs> so, bad yeah. example. Well, if you dump a beer on someone's head, that's fourth degree um, assault. Unless they ask for it. Well, yeah. Sixty miles an hour off is a felony speeding ticket. I don't I know. I think that depends on the state. It'd be pretty difficult to go sixty miles an hour over the speed limit in most places. Uh, uh, never mind. <clears throat> like on a, a highway. Okay, you don't want. To. <laughs> I was just thinking, like. Uh, you're going up I-5 and it's 70 miles an hour. You'd have to be doing 130. I may have done 80, 90 miles an hour over a speed limit once. Long, long That's pretty time amazing. Ago. Were you in a school <clears throat> zone? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that's another story. So Okay. Offline, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, did we cover that topic fully well enough? Is there more to it? Well, I do. I do have a follow-up question. Yeah, Theoretically, um, we were talking about people that committed just plain old felonies. What about people that have murdered people? Should they get um, the I, right to own a gun back? I think so. Because it's not automatically you, a life sentence. When you've served your time. Uh, like this, uh, we can use a current example. Um, this, um, this police officer that was thinking she was using a taser. Theoretically, she's going to get convicted of something along the lines of involuntary man manslaughter. manslaughter. Yeah. Something like that. She didn't mean to kill him, but she did because of her mistake. Um, let's say she serves. I don't. I don't know what the minimum with that. Five years, ten years, something, something like that. Let's say she serves that. Should she get her gun rights back when the crime she committed was killing somebody with a gun? Should that be automatic, or she should? Should she have like a time period and then uh, asking of, uh, can I please have my guns back? Well, I still, I still say it should be automatic. You know, if you, once you've served your complete time, 
you know, finished all your parole, you know, and all that. Once your debt is paid, it's paid. Um, you should get your rights back. And again, I, you know, eh, if there's a process to it, I'm okay with it as long as I, you know, there's not undue burden to do it. And um, what I'm kind of thinking of is, um, you know, like with a sex offender who's on the uh, the registry, they're not allowed to, um, like, work at a daycare. What about uh, if she wanted to be a cop again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's a little different issue than rights. Oops. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I know what she would do. She would start a training, um, uh, shooting training. What do you call those? My brain's start not wearing, working. Start wearing tight graphic tees and start a YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know it's definitely an interesting topic I think it needs to be talked about more I, I do um, but it, I don't think it will get talked about a lot you know it's not a big sexy issue and it's not the world is ending kind of issue. Um, it's, you know, people that went to jail and, you know, society kind of tends to want to just dispose of them anyways, you know. And in some states, and we're talking about black powder guns, um, like uh, I think it's Ohio, even Ohio considers those firearms and you can't have them if you're a felon. So depending oh, on your that- state. That's right. There are some states that you have to go yeah, through. You can even have to go through an FFL for black powder. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, yeah, it's Ohio. I thought there was a couple, but I don't. I don't remember. Derringers for felons. What if we just give them um, tranquilizer guns? Give them, a new, tasers? give them a hundred bucks, a new suit, and uh, a Derringer. Yep. Well, I think we uh, I think we beat this into the ground pretty good. I hope we made a salient argument. Well, we have a different opinion, but we would uh, technically vote the same exact way if we were given the option. Yeah, we're not too far off from each other. It's just I'm... um, I believe more in freedom than you do, I think. (laughs) Ouch, that. That's a deep burn. (laughs) No, I I see your... (laughs) You know, I understand your point. I'm not... I wouldn't be completely against it. it. because it moves, it moves, moves it in the right direction. I'm definitely not for a uh, complete ban. I think that's uh, uh, completely unacceptable. Um, I prefer the petition process, but I'll fight for uh, full rights. Yeah, I think that's a fair. Um, fair stance to have. Um, so the other thing we we're going to kind of talk about was um, EDC. Um, I am a minimal minimal minimalist when it comes to EDC. Um, my wedding ring, Oop, my wallet, my keys. And I've got a little, little tiny flashlight that I keep on my keychain. 
And then I've got this little, kind of like a multi-tool. It's got a little blade, screwdriver. Oh, that's cool. Um, bottle opener, shaped like a key. And it will get through security. Shh. Um, Future felony in the making. <laughs> and my firearm. Um, I own, that probably won't get through security. No, I normally don't carry uh, my revolver, but everything else is upstairs. This is the one I had down here. Um, I don't carry spare mags. If I carry my revolver, then I do carry two um, speed loaders for it. But uh, That's smart. That's all I carry. I see people that carry the, uh, the moon clips. But yeah. if they get bent in your pocket... You're yeah. not getting those in your gun. Um, I do supplement what I carry with stuff in the car. Like I've got another flashlight, got, you know, um, tools, gloves, water, and all that that I keep in my car. But on me, that's all I carry. I'm okay with just carrying that. Um, what do you carry? Do you do a watch or you do your phone? No. I use my phone. I will wear... Pretty much the only time I wear a watch is if I wear my Cougar watch, my WSU Cougars watch. I've got one from 71. Um, I found it on eBay. They gave it out. Part of the stadium burnt down, so they gave out a watch to the big donors. Um, it's like a 21 Jewel watch. It's a pretty neat little watch, but I normally don't wear a watch. Now, I have a question, seeing as you're skilled in martial arts. Every single time I've ever worn a watch and I've got in a fight, the watch breaks. Even though I'm wearing it on my offhand. Um, the last Is it time, cheap watches or they're not probably. meant for getting in fist fights? <laughs> well, um, the last time I got, I punched somebody. I was wearing a watch. Um, it, it's... Um, a Seiko, to, you know, it's not super luxurious, but um, I think it's my old Seiko. I have a, um, it was steel. The one I have now is titanium, but um, it stayed on, you know, punching people. I used to, I used to wear cheap, you know, like Walmart watches and I would yeah. break them all the time. And that Seiko I had for 15 years. And then my wife got me a titanium one, which is nice because it's lighter. And I, you know, I thought it was a decent watch, but when I run into watch people that see it, they tell me, nice watch. So, yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> but I think it's, it's maybe, I don't know the watches you're wearing, but um, it withstood some punching pretty good. So I need to spend more than a hundred bucks probably. Well, eh. Probably. Um, you know, just I've had, uh, I've had either the band break off or the timepiece break. So it's, it's either the band is strong enough not to break off and then the timepiece breaks or the band breaks off and the timepiece is okay. Well, it, I don't know if it's the way you fight. You know, if you're kind of flailing monkey style where you're hitting your <laughs> hand on everything or. Um, I imagine it's more uh, the Hulk. My wrist <laughs> grows too fast and it explodes the watch. Well, that could be too where um, it depended on how tight you keep your band, what type of band it is. When you flex, um, it can put pressure on your band. But, yeah, uh, that, uh, uh, that's a good reason to switch over to uh, those type that rip out the hair on your wrist. Those uh, the ones the that expand and uh, yeah. contrast. I don't know. Mine is mine is the little claspy type, but it locks in and folds over. So I don't know if it's whatever. But so not to get too far off topic here. What's your EDC? Do you EDC? What's your EDC? I carry a watch so I can break one. <laughs> um, 
uh, usually a 1911 or a revolver. Um, if I'm carrying a 1911, I carry two mags. If I'm carrying a revolver, I don't carry anything. No reload, just I got seven shots, and then I can use it as a club. And uh, cell phone, wallet, um, and keys. That's it. No knife. Yeah, I don't carry a knife. And part of it's the way I carry. Um, uh, I keep my gun at probably a 230 um, with a forward cant. So it's more towards the front, and that blocks my front right pocket. And then I keep my wallet in the you know, back pocket. My phone goes in my left pocket, and then the left front. Left rear is for, you know, if I've got change or receipts, I throw it back there. I'm usually um, doing uh, most of my carry in a overcoat or a concealment item. So cell phones in the in the uh, vest pocket or whatnot. Yeah. Do you? I don't like do keeping change? Uh, stuff in my back pockets. Do you change your EDC? Um, seasonally? Oh yeah, big time. Um, I use uh, shoulder holsters in the fall and in the winter when it's acceptable to wear a coat every single where you go in Washington. I don't. Um, I carry the same things I carry no matter what season it is or what I'm wearing. Um, I normally carry my uh, H&K P30 in 40 caliber. And then if I'm not carrying that, then it's my PPK. Um, and then once in a while, when I want to be fancy, I'll throw the wood grips on with my little logo. Oops. If I can get my logo there. There you go. With my little yeah, Danger Mouse logo. It is funny, like, when I wear it to the gun shop, I can see out of the corner of my eye. I'll see people kind of crane over a little bit to try and get a good look without looking like they're looking. But uh, you mentioned something and uh, that I also like to do. You said uh, you supplement with what's in your vehicle. And uh, I also do that. I just have a, um, I don't know what you'd call it, satchel. Something that if, I got a single cab truck, so... You just pull the seat forward, and then I got my stuff behind that. Yeah. And you can't see it from the outside of the truck. But uh, just your standard survival, quote-unquote, stuff. Hell, I got a poncho in there. Yeah, I try and keep enough where I'm, you know, if I'm stuck for a few hours or, you know, breakdown or something like that. It's not going to get me through um, a week, but just if something unexpected happens. I think if part of part of my light EDC is because of where I live, um, it's, you know, suburban, but it's suburban to a small town. Yeah. If I lived closer to Seattle, I you know I might carry an extra mag or something like that. But you know I I don't think there's a huge chance of needing suppressing fire in my little town. And you know you never know. But I'm okay with the 13 rounds of 40 caliber. Should get the job done. Um. I would hope so. You know and. The statistics are it's like three, three, three. You know, um, self defense encounters are solved with three or less rounds within three seconds at three yards or less, something like that. Yeah, and that's uh, the average. So there's how many cases were solved with one? Or, or none. To just get it down that low. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's a stat that's hard 
hard to show. It'll be they'll say, well, it's between five hundred thousand and two million. Well, that's that's a huge span, but it's because a lot of times it just doesn't get reported. You know, somebody confronts you, you pull out your gun, they run away. Maybe you report it, maybe you don't. Um, there was theoretically, I've had to do that once, and it did not get reported. There was um, um, happened kind of downtown here. Um, a friend of somebody I work with had two guys pull a knife, and he he pulled his gun. They ran away. He did call the police, and they told him, "Well, there's nothing we can do." You know. There's, <laughs> so, it, you know that that'll get logged as a call, but does that get reported as an incident? You know. You know, I just thought of something. Um, there is something unique that I do that you did not mention. Well, you might do it. I don't know. But um, as far as um, what I keep in my car, I keep a second cell phone. Really? Yeah, and it's not activated. But you can still call 911 with an unactivated cell phone. And I keep it in case my main cell phone breaks and I need help and I'm out in the middle of nowhere with no one else. I will be able to theoretically use this other cell phone. That's not a bad idea. And I understand um, carrying a spare mag, not for capacity, but in case there's an issue with the mag. Yeah. Yeah. I just still don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chances of you needing the gun are basically zero. Yeah, I, you know, I've never had to, and I hope I never have to. Um, yeah. There are people out there that hope that they do one day, and I don't understand them. <laughs> They're a unique individual. Well, I think a lot of it's just trying to prove something. You know, the same guys that um, look f- to start a fight at a bar. Yeah, every fight I've ever been in, I regret now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you learn. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been in a lot of fights. I don't, I don't enjoy it. So I don't look to do it. Ooh, I just thought of something else. Part of your EDC was a wedding ring. What is that made out of? Titanium. Because I have gotten in a fight with a ring on, and it got crushed around my finger. And it was not fun. My finger will crush before this crushes. Um, Okay, good. Titanium with a koa wood. There you go. Because you see people all the time, they get in a fight with like a, a gold or a silver ring on, and it gets smushed. And they got to cut that thing off. Yeah, I I do have um, a silicone ring, but it doesn't. I ordered the wrong size, and I never got another one, so I don't I don't wear it. I'm one of the but, uh, groove groove rings. Yeah, those are real good if you're doing a like construction jobs and there's a chance you might like get it hung up on a nail or man getting your finger degloved would not be fun a lot of people in construction that i know they uh they wear their wedding ring around a necklace around their neck yeah i don't on their finger i don't wear my ring at work um, just because it gets snagged on stuff yeah i i only wear it when i go out um, during the day, and then as soon as I come home, I take it off. <laughs> oh, Ozark Yeoman has a good point. Um, that spare mag is in case the, the Russians invade. Haven't you seen Red Dawn? <laughs> Wolverine! <laughs> yeah, if, uh, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I was actually in that movie. I was the guy they were taking the 1911 out of his dead hand. Remember? <laughs> they were ripping it. He had the bumper sticker that says, for my cold yeah. dead hand. That was me. 
I did. I, <laughs> turns out an AK-47 versus a 1911 is not a good situation to be in. <laughs> Who knew? If you ever look up and you see Russians paratrooping, you might want something bigger than a 1911. Oh, there you go. Just eat more food. Well, that was the issue, is I ate more food and it stopped fitting. <laughs> That's a harder problem to fix. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, if... Uh, if you want to tell us what your EDC, you know, later on, tell us in the comments. Leave a comment. Say what you carry. Um, do you carry more? Do you carry less? Do you not carry? Some people don't carry outside the house. Um, I got a question that? for them. Do you guys still use those uh, magnetic key holders for a spare key on your vehicle? Remember those? Yeah, I don't. Um, but I'm very regimented about, uh, my car keys in my younger days. I would lock my keys in my car quite often. So I don't put my keys down. I don't set them down inside the car. Um, uh, they stay in my pocket. If I'm doing something, I don't put my keys down anywhere except in my pocket. It's either in my pocket or hanging on the key ring where they belong. I've lost my key, or I've locked my keys in my trunk of my car. And it was a old 69 Chevy Impala. So it does, you can't like pop the trunk from the inside. There's no like lever. You have to undo it with the key. <laughs> and the I key did was that. in the trunk. I did that in my um, uh, 68 satellite. But you take the seat back off and you could reach into the that's exactly what I did. Into the trunk. <laughs> yeah, I had to use a stick because the key was at yeah. the very front of the trunk. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was uh, 4th of July in Wenatchee, and it was like 115 <laughs> degrees. And I was up a canyon road about 10 miles. Hey, that at least was, it was uh, dry heat. Yeah, not in the car <laughs> with me sweating. That was fun. God, I wish I had a hide a key right then. Oh, and that's that's an important point. My uh, my trunk had a different key than the car yeah. doors. So, do you have a spare key for your trunk? Or am I just yeah, out of luck? I, yeah, and then if you've got a lock and gas cap, then that's a third key. Yeah, I had one of those too. Now I've got the keyless entry. So you just yeah, where you got like the, the key pass in your wallet. I um, have those. No, it's on the in the key fob. But you just touch touch the door handle and it opens. But, Old car uh, problems. Yeah, but. I still would trust, um, you know, that 68 satellite where you broke down, I could fix it on the side of the road, you know, with, you know, basic hand tools and get home. Yeah, I've done that. Broke down, walked to a Walmart, bought some <laughs> MacGyver stuff, went back to the car, fixed it, kept driving. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I'm gonna shut her down. We're at our hour. But uh, any last words, Mr. Penfold? Um. Yeah, I don't got anything. Fair enough. Don't uh, get in a fight with a shitty watch.
So, um, thank you to everybody who has <laughs> who's been in the chat tonight. Um, and uh, if you watch this in a replay, thank you for watching it in replay. Leave any comments you have um, so we can continue the conversation um, later on. And everybody have a good night.